Well, now we're to the point of, of doing the decorative work on our match boarding. I pointed out we have this little bead mold. And that's a, a decorative feature, but it's more than that. Anybody who's worked with wood and closing in a wall, you know that over time and over the seasons, the wood will expand and contract depending on relative humidity. Putting that bead mold on these boards means that if the wood shrinks apart a little bit, you don't really notice it. It hides the movement and uh, gives some nice shadow lines on the wall. Now, I'll show you what a bead is. These are small beads, it's hard to see. So I shot a bead on the edge of this piece of pine. A bead is just a half round on the corner of a board with a groove that separates the bead from the field of the board. It's made with a beading plane. The plane cuts down the corner of the board, takes out the groove, rounds off the bead. Just a very simple molding. It's, these planes are all over the place. They're, they're probably the most common molding plane you're going to get because every carpenter had a set of them. This one was a 3 8 bead, and they come in all different sizes. I've got to set these are some of the ones I have. Some of them are large beads, some of them are small beads. They all make the same molding with just slightly different sizes. Although sometimes they have certain characteristics, the size of the groove and that sort of thing. But here was my problem. With all my beading planes, I did not have the plane that made the exact bead I needed. Because this match boarding is not for my own amusement. This was to close in a part of a wall after a project so that the wall would look like the rest of the wall that was completed about 1911. So it's got to match what's up there. What are you going to do? Well, I could go running around looking for a beading plane that's just exactly what I need. That could take a long time. I could use the beading cutter for the 45, but the right size beading cutter for the 45, not quite the right profile. I could have taken some time and made a new iron to fit the 45. That would be relatively quick. However, the 45 is complicated to set up. It'll get you out of all kinds of trouble. But there's nothing like a wooden plane for this kind of work. What are you going to do? Well, I decided, because I don't know any better, to make my own plane. To make a side bead plane that would be the exact profile I would need cut the bead on the edge of those boards. Now, just quickly, you'll notice my plane doesn't really look like these antique planes. North American planes, English planes, wider at the bottom, narrower at the top, cut out on the side. The wedge has a rounded top on it. This plane is actually a little wider at the top than it is at the bottom. The wedge is flat topped. Well, that wasn't accidental. Amongst all the tools I, I have floating around here is this plane from Austria. Probably made before the First World War. Very different plane from the English style. Now it has some advantages and some disadvantages. One of the advantages is, whereas a North American or English plane, the cutting iron is, is wide, but the tang that, that holds the iron in place and the one the wedge bears against is very narrow. Sometimes you get a little vibration in there. The Austrian plane has a wide Tang. The wedge can bear against it. It's very good support. Anyway, 
I don't have a lot of plane irons lying around. You'll recognize what I've done here. I used a small broken mill file. You can tell the tang on the end of the file. Ground the cutter. Nice wide wedge to bear on it. I used, I was a little bit inspired by that Austrian plane. Anyway, it's a plane made of scrap steel, a broken file, and the wood is simply birch that I got out of the firewood pile. Waste not, want not. Anyway, I'm just going to take my board, put it in this crude cradle, just holds it in place. I'm going to just use my hold fast to kind of pin this end. This ends up against a screw, so keep it in place. Now, we'll see how this works. This is nasty wood to work with. So, be prepared for anything. Just take the plane, it has a little fence that stops the cut. It has a depth stop. When you get down to it, it stops it from cutting deep. And just put it against the edge of that corner above the tongue. Oh, nasty, nasty wood. See, it's probably already starting to form that groove. We're done. Matched boarding. side bead at the joint. All that's left to do now is make this white wood look like this ancient dark wood. But that's another story from my grandfather's.